big black box. Staring at me. I had to have it. I had to have it. No one's fun anymore! Whatever happened to fun? You were listening to and just like crap, with your hosts, Jay and John. Hey! Welcome back to the broadcast, your favorite podcast. You ask for this shit, if you're easily offended, we don't recommend it. You ask for this shit, so here it is. You. I'll tell you how I'm doing. Not well, bitch. All right, welcome back to And Just Like Crap. I'm John. This is Jay. What's up, y'all? What's up? We're, today we're talking about episode six of And Just Like That, Bomb Cyclone. Jay, what do you think about this episode as a whole? Well, Bomb is is perfect for this title. Right. <laughs> the title of this episode. I found this episode to be infuriating. And like so many levels, I was surprised at how mad I got at a couple of these scenes, especially towards the end, which of course we'll get to. My leg was shaking. I was very surprised. I'm like, why is this making me so mad? Yeah, I hear, I understand where you're coming from. At first, it kind of faked me out because at, at the start of the episode, I thought this is because last week it was getting better for a moment. And this week, I was like, oh, okay, we're doing better. I I could see how the show could be improving, but then, again, it inevitably failed. Um, so, yeah, I'm with you on that. Yeah, I was like, whenever we're going to talk about this, I thought, God, what am I going to say that's not going to sound like I'm like like crazy person? Because maybe we'll just say nothing. We should just sit here in silence for the next hour because it's just... I have so much to say, but yet I'm like processing it still kind of. And you know, you said something the last time, it's funny, you said you think these episodes should be like 30 minutes. Well, the last two episodes, I paused to see how much time was left. And both times it was like 14 minutes were left. Me too. I I, yeah. I pause three or four times to look. And I'm like, how much longer do I have to sit through this? Yeah. And each time it was like 14 minutes. Like I watched this twice, you know, I do. And both times I didn't realize this, but I paused, I think at the exact same time. And there were 14 minutes left in the episode. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. they should be 30 minutes. I don't know why they, they can't commit to a time. Yeah. I don't either. I, it's too much. It just drones on. It drones but on. yeah, this, this episode, I think they tried to do some, a lot of nostalgia names were being dropped of like old characters. We haven't even heard and forever. And so I was like, when some names were mentioned, I was like, oh, yeah, right. Oh, right. Like, we all, they almost killed my memories of, of the past. Right. So the, the episode opens up with Carrie. She's setting up her ring light. Look, we've all been there. We're setting up our ring light. We're stacking our laptop on five books, dictionaries, things we'll never read, the Bible, um, trying to get a good angle on our face. Okay, sure. I'm like, my thought was, you have a bazillion dollars and you have your laptop sitting on an empty box. But hey, I, I think everyone does that, regardless. Everyone? Of your... I don't know. I'm What's like your, a... What is your laptop sitting on right now? Well, I don't want to say. But if I have her <laughs> money, listen, this is me. I'm like, I try to think like, what can make my life more convenient in every level? And if I can fix that, I will. And, and one would be a laptop stand. <laughs> I would be like... Okay, so I knew. What the, I guess clearly she doesn't do this very often. Maybe that's why. But she's the ring light, so I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I have a lap uh, a laptop stand also, but it's sometimes. Okay, it's just, thank you. You have one. Why doesn't Carrie, who is a millionaire, right? Because I'm laptop. poor and I don't. But but also sometimes you need that extra height, that extra oomph. But she's not as tall as we are. So, what's her no, excuse? Or, or as smart. Exactly. <laughs> Um, okay, so she's setting up her laptop for an interview with some, seems like millennial trash, or not millennial, Gen Z trash. Yeah, um, they never even said who that was. They never even said. No, but it's some chick who has clearly not even read Carrie's book. 
knows nothing about her. She's like, so I Googled you. I mean, this this was just pretty funny and accurate to me because, you know, who reads the book anymore? Do Does well, anyone? I think there's I mean, like could- one designated person in the country to read the book and then everybody else just does an article about them. well i mean wouldn't you try to fake it at least <laughs> yeah the back of the cup oh i would be like oh, it's about death. <laughs> instead of like do nothing and then look <laughs> i mean she looks so stupid like she didn't even read the back of the book and then the article ended up being about what color lip gloss she wore i thought that Which i mean she never even said <laughs> that we saw did it so yeah. so carrie's laptop fell off and i mean i know carrie's rich but i don't care how rich you are the thought of a macbook which we're recording on right now, falling off and breaking on the floor just like makes my heart skip a beat. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, it did smash the noise was a, a broken glass noise that did kind of hurt a little. <laughs> and this did sort of harken back to one of the better episodes of Sex and the City when Carrie's laptop broke and Aiden t- tried to help her. I think the the episode title was "My Motherboard Myself." When her laptop broke and Aiden tried to help her. And then she was very irritated with him when she was at the computer repair shop. Do you think this that is on purpose? Because Aiden helped her with the laptop. And then now that Aiden's being introduced, her laptop's broken. Maybe it's like a, it's like a sign. Yeah. I, I, I think so. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so then we see Miranda who's waking up at Naya's house. In a panic because she thinks she's running late for something and Nye informs her that it's Sunday. Nye is doing her own divorce paperwork. That was like the only relatable moment, maybe. Because <laughs> I've done it so many times. You wake up and you're like, oh shit, I'm late for work. And you're like, oh, it's Saturday. Yeah, for sure. I've done that many times. And Nye, I'm like, you have a you have a lawyer squatting in your apartment. Like, utilize that. Th- that I thought that as well. And I also thought that she said she was surprised to see those pajamas. Well, was this Miranda's first night there or the first time wearing the pajamas? Which one? Because I was confused why she was surprised at what she was wearing. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. I'm like, wait, do you dress? What are your pajamas? Or the timeline don't make sense. (laughs) If any. What are my, what are my pajamas? Oh, um. Do you have like cute matching pajamas? pajamas? I would wear those. I like hearts. I would wear those. No, I those thought they were cute. cute. I'm just like, that is awfully dressy. You know, most of us are in like sweatshorts. Me, sweatshorts and a t-shirt. Well, the cue is, what time of year was that? So it became winter very quickly. Very quickly. So did it start, <laughs> did it start, right, did it start winter as well? Because Miranda's wearing those hearts. And then when she's at Chase, she's like, oh, it's cold. And she's wearing flannel. Yeah, well, she. I, I think mean, she butches it up around Che to try. Is that a cliche lesbian thing? Yeah, we're going for. <laughs> She's wearing flannel. I don't know. I think she does butch it up around Che a little bit. Yeah. We see Lisa Todd Wexley is in bed with her fan, her whole family, and sees Rock's ad. Rock is Charlotte's they them do, son dot. What am I starting to say? Child, and they see. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa sees Rock's uh, ad for Ralph Lauren in the paper. So she calls Charlotte, who already has seen it, because Anthony brought over 10 copies of the newspaper. Well, the thing is about that scene now, I don't wish harm on any child. And we do like children. But I really wished when her daughter was jumping up and down on the bed, she would have just jumped right out the window. Like, I was like, (laughs) just like, you know, like, just jump and bounce right out that window. I'm so tired of these kids. Like, they're not interesting or funny. And they're just... In the way. Bounce out the window. Bounce out the window. <laughs> Hashtag it. Uh, <laughs> Lily is upset that Charlie didn't make a reservation for her, for her and her boyfriend. A res. She said a res. A res. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not 12. Um, for her and her boyfriend, Blake, at Nobu. And um, Anthony suggests that they go to Shake Shack instead. And Lily says she can't lose her virginity. This is so unreal. Lily says, I can't lose my virginity after a date at, a lunch date at Shake Shack. And Charlotte, Harry, and Anthony all look sort of taken aback by that because this is so unrealistic. Did you announce to your parents when you were losing your virginity? They were there while it was happening. Of course. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but, but okay, so we're about to crack an egg with this with this Lily story, right? I mean, so many things to say. Um, so she's rebelling say, because uh, Rock is getting a lot of attention. So she's. That's what they're leading us to believe, right? She's like jealous, well, right? But I, 
Right, but I, I think, like, so I, I think there's so many things. Like, I did some research when I was watching this because I'm like, how old is Lily again? You know, like, for her to be talking, because the actress, who is, like, 26, looks 13 and is playing, like, 19. So I'm like, how old 17. is Lily? 17. Well, I read online, <laughs> research, she supposedly was born in 2004. That's what the talk was because they went to pick her up because they adopted her in 2004. So that would make her eight, 19 at this point. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I'm not, I, feel, I know. I, I know, failed I know. so many math classes. I couldn't even tell I know. You. I was sleuthing. But then I'm like, okay, so I guess this is okay for us to talk about this. Cause we already talked about, you know, they were lusting after the high schooler in a pedo way. Right. I'm like, is this what this is too? But I guess it isn't because she's old enough, but it felt very skeezy to me. It, it and, does make us feel as com- commentators to feel uncomfortable to talk about, but whatever. Yeah. Um, I almost didn't want to talk about it at all because it was irritating, but it's a big part of the story. So I guess. Yeah, we kind of have to. Yeah. Um, it's super unrealistic to announce to your parents that today's no matter how jealous of you, of your sibling, you may be that you're going to lose your virginity. That is just so that would never happen. I mean, never. No one would ever say that. Ever. I mean, they, they're talking about how sex positive Charlotte is. And we're like, since when? No, I mean, Charlotte is conservative and prude. That's that's who yes. she was. And she sure, she has evolved over the past 20 years, but it's just not this much. Come on. Nobody is nobody is encouraging their 17-year-old to go bone. That's just not happening. No, and I was waiting for the conversation of, so Lily, if he, wa- if he wants to come on your tits... <laughs> You, <laughs> I was waiting. Like, you really want to show your sex positive, Charlotte? Let's lay it down. Talk about her coming, coming on her tits. Teach her how to do the Kris Kringles. Like, you know, let's let's do this. Let's show it all. Yeah, you know, your dad. When your dad comes on my tits, I like to pull pull them apart so you can come right in the cleavage area, and it drains and, and, down in my belly button. Yes, and you know, Lily. Just FYI, I'm still blowing Harry. Um, and you know what your dad really penis, likes. <laughs> uh, if he needs a penis pump, yeah, I'll tell you what your dad. Your dad <laughs> loves it. When he, he, I love a real donkey butt. So. <laughs> oh, <laughs> let me explain what that is. Or a dirty Sanchez. I just love. <laughs> oh, you know what your dad's really into. <laughs> when I don't wash. <laughs> He loves it. He loves it when he lies under our glass table, and I <laughs> and I squat over it. And I squat over. Make all his dreams come true. Probably lick the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> so Lisa and Herbert are having cl- conflicting events this week. She's they're being... fighting again. Oh, go on. Sorry. Yeah, about <laughs> how she's being honored for being a black woman in film, and he's being honored for being hot. And I have to say, which event would you rather go to? (laughs) Anything with Herbert. Yes, he's honored by me for being hot every time. But no, I keep thinking, like, they're they're having these, like, same fights. Like, Herbert's trying to help her, and she's like, fuck off. And then they have it later in the thing. He's trying to help her. She's mad. Leave me alone. I can take care of myself. I'm like, I don't know. I don't understand their marriage very much. Like, Herbert's always coming across as, like, the sweetest person. The sweetest. And so wonderful and so loving. And all she does is like bat him off when he like tries to help her. And I understand. And, I'm not, and I don't understand the, the plight of the, you know, black woman and stuff. So I'm not saying that I understand the story right. 100%. But I do see, I feel like I'm like, God, leave him alone. Like he's just trying to help you. And that's fine if I understand you want to do it yourself, whatever. But I'm like, I'm like defending him. Yeah, because he's not like an alpha male. He's definitely, he, he's sweet. And he's yes. not trying to take away from her success. He's just trying to make his own shit happen. And who can fault him for that? Because he's also a black man in America trying to make things happen. And that's not e- the easiest path to to go down either. Well, isn't it also um, her fault that he's doing this thing? <laughs> Didn't she, like, sign him up to run for this? And, like, now she's mad when he has something to do? Well, it's a conflicting event. <laughs> it's her fault fucking fault she's like i want you to be successful as long as it doesn't conflict with any of my stuff yeah Yeah, it doesn't impact me so yeah you're right uh charlotte talks to lily about wanting to lose her virginity lily is playing her piano her tori amos um or or 
Lana Del Rey esque. Wow. Lana Lana Del Rey. Oh God. Moment and and Charlotte's like, can you please cut that out? It's making everything seem sad. And I'm like, well, isn't it? Yeah, and that's all sad, girl. Um, we'll kind of breeze past this because it's really not that interesting. <laughs> Carrie and Seema are at the Apple Store. Um, and because uh, Carrie has to get a whole new laptop, I guess she didn't have Apple Care, which is really an <laughs> amateur mistake. <laughs> what? Well, she's a millionaire; she doesn't need any of that shit. She'll just go get a new one. She's like Who Apple Care, care? fuck she that. I'm rich. She won't buy a stand, but she'll buy another one. Yeah, she's like, I'll just replace it. That's fine. And she said she had that MacBook for eight years. Now, I've had a, a MacBook for about 13 years that is still running strong. As long as I lean it up against the wall, you know, so the screen doesn't cut out. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it sounds it's, like a winner. Yeah, it's still going strong. So, Matt, I have to say, Apple products, love you. If you want to reach out to us and give us free products, we'd really appreciate it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but Apple... Don't you know Seema is wearing brown in this? She's only wearing brown now. I feel like they listened to our show and we once said Seema looks amazing in brown and now that's all they put her in. So I guess they took that from us. If, you know, oh, if they absolutely. Else. There are a few things in this episode where I'm like, they definitely hurt us. Yes. Uh, there are definitely... Yes. And she does look great, even wearing... Um, what is that? Mohair or ostrich feathers or fun fur? I'm not, I'm not, into, feathers. In, uh, I'm not well, into feathers. In the Apple store, whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it, she does look good. Uh, anyway, um, so there, so Seema invites Carrie to the Hamptons for summer. And Carrie's like, sure. Is this the MacBook I should buy? Whatever. Do you, let me ask you this. Do you ever notice, like, and I totally pay attention to this stuff, is on shows, like, you know, they have off-screen cue cards, you know, so if you can't remember your lines, it helps you know, show them where they can read it. I always watch to see if actors are looking at cue cards while they're talking to people. I feel like the actor who plays Seema does that. Or like, something Like Saturday Night Live? Yes. Like, they look like if they can't remember a line, they'll look kind of... They'll be sort of like averting their eyes a little bit, but kind of looking off. It does in and like they can't remember the line. And I feel like that actor does that. I would like to think at this in this day and age that we're beyond cue cards and we're in the inner ear piece where they just <laughs> dictate the, the line. Yeah, yeah. But maybe I don't know. Um, so we see uh, Che gave uh, Miranda permission to come over and spend the night to fuck and spend the night. And after they come, both come, uh, Che is annoyed that Miranda is still there. <laughs> Pull the strap on out. Yeah, Miranda wants to go to to cuddle, and Che's like, no, I can't be bothered with that. And then Che starts doing her they, their cameo videos. Hi, it's Che Diaz. Happy birthday, Tony. Congratulations on getting into MIT or whatever. Right. And Congratulations Miranda on losing your virginity, Lily. Yeah, like... What was that? She looked like shit doing her cameos in the middle of the night in the dark. I would demand, my, first of all, I would never want one from her, but I would also demand my money back. You know, with her effort in, bitch. With her lover's back in the background. <laughs> right, with that suction sound of the of the um, dildo being pulled out. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know. Drowning out what she's saying. <laughs> And Miranda, uh, finally, Miranda stands up to Che, which I love. Miranda and, Miranda and Steve finally both stand up to people in this episode. Unfortunately, it's not really yeah. um, mm. what we what we need. But um, Miranda's like, "What the fuck? Why do you? Why are you giving that? What's that voice you're using? Why are you performing for these people?" And then Che's like, "Well, what? You only like me when I'm performing, and I'm. We're all thinking at home. No, you're awful when you're performing. Miranda actually likes you for who you pretend to be or who you are." She's the only one. The on only Earth. one. Because the test yeah. audience wasn't having it. The network wasn't having it. Miranda, you should be grateful anyone likes what you're doing. That's correct. We hate our gut hate their guts. I agree. Like, what is what is Che's problem? Well, we know. Yeah. Just awful. So, okay, Carrie meets with her publisher to talk about the stupid article written by that Gen Z chick earlier. And then the publisher says Carrie is going to be the star of WidowCon, um, which is like a rock show for sad people. Don't or, do it. Or like a Wilson <laughs> Phillips concert. Shut 
Now, this, if they have not been listening to our podcast, they have been. This is proof positive because no one stands for Wilson Phillips like Jay. Jay, take it away. I was appalled. So if you listen to our podcast, go to Patreon. I've... <laughs> I'm a t- I'm a Wilson- I am a Wilson Phillips fan. I've t- we talk about them all. No, you are the Wilson Phillips fan. <laughs> we talk about them almost every episode. Somehow it comes up. You are right. This was shocking that this was the reference that they used. I, I was like, what? You're telling like, me I'm they Wilson- came up with this on their own? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. This is this, on I- our bingo card. If you question this, um, anyone listening, go listen to our podcast. The proof is Carney Wilson, or one of them, or both of them, <laughs> or all of them, comes up every almost every episode. And to see this on the show, who is this? Who is who is listening to us? Now I want to know. Now I want to investigate this. This was a who wink. That line? This was a wink and a nod to us. And we see you, yeah. and we hear you, and we want That's our cut of the money. Um, <laughs> Rachel Dratt shows up. Who? We love. Oh, love She's her. so funny, so hilarious, um, of SNL fame, and also she was on King of Queens. She's just fucking hilarious. Um, she is the head of WidowCon. That's not the real name. I forgot what the real name was, but anyway, Car- and she says she was Carrie's. Well, con is a good word, but go for on. sure, she says Carrie. She was for Carrie's former writing partner from the early '90s, and they wrote a screenplay together, but then. Carrie didn't show up to the pitch meeting, I guess, with a film studio or something. So Rachel Dratch is... sounded vaguely familiar. Is that a previous episode that I'm just not connecting with? No, Amy Sedaris was on it, and so was um, Molly Shannon. But that was that was unrelated to this. Hmm. But anyway. Where did this come from? I think they just made this up. There's really no proof of this that I know of in the original show. I'm sure the commenters commenters will let us know if there there is. But anyway, so Rachel Dratch is the and she's like, Carrie, remember you didn't show up for that meeting with the filmmakers. Please make sure you show up for WidowCon. And Carrie's like, Oh, of course I will because I'm going to sell some books. Finally, she's doing something to hawk her books, and st- you know what I mean. Like maybe this was kind of like an. A total thing. Does this even exist? Does something like this ha- exist in real life? I'm like sure it does. Thing? It may be yeah. called something different, but I'm sure there are so many cons out there. There's like Comic Con, yeah, Fashion Con, Gay okay. Con, Doggy yeah. Con, Furry Con. There's a fur- total cons, fur- con artists, drag con, drag like con. Well, the thing is, is um. I just think that people are addicted to grief sometimes. So it kind of doesn't surprise me with this thing exists. So I do kind of believe that that it exists in real life. It sounds like a real party, though. Carrie calls Che, who is sitting at home getting stoned, being depressed. And Carrie invites Che to WidowCon. Because they're such great friends. I don't understand. Where did that even come from? Like, why Che? Like, what happened to being friends with Charlotte and being friends with Miranda? You know, what happened with that? Now it's Che. Like, I don't understand. I would not call Che. Would well, you? I've had to pick all those people. People you've known for, you know, a decade or however long they've known each other. You would ignore them and call Che. No, I would absolutely rather wing it by myself than call Che. But I think it, they're trying to make it make sense by having, because Che is a alleged stand-up. And, yeah. and Carrie's like, well, you you speak in front of crowds all the time, and I'm just a loser who's been working for in this field for years. Right, who is... An established you know, author and yes. respected newspaper journalist, author, whatever. Whatever. Um, whatever. So she's like, okay, well, I guess we'll just try and uh, shoehorn Che in the, in the script somehow. Charlotte asked Miranda if she... Okay, wait a minute. Carrie and Charlotte join Miranda at Naya's house for dinner. Of course, Miranda is already there because she's couch surfing. Right, and then um, Naya has her phone on the table during a dinner party with friends. So rude. Fucking rude. Yeah, I was like, what are you doing? Well, you know why? She's playing Monopoly Go. <laughs> right. She, <laughs> she is. <laughs> she's like totally playing Angry Birds. Angry Birds. Do people still play that? Was that like a total throwback? 
You know, I'm not a phone game person. Hungry Shark. I don't know either. <laughs> do, 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 do. Wordle. She's playing Wordle in the middle of the game. Words with friends. Nobody's saying anything interesting anyways. Charlotte asks Miranda if she and Steve will still remain friends after the, their divorce. And Miranda says, well, it's up to Steve. I did all the damage. Um... I'm like shaking my head. You can't hear it. This I do because this this infuriated me as a jilted ex lover of someone. I mean, as a jilted ex lover. As a jilted ex lover. <laughs> it really it really <laughs> struck a nerve with me. I'm like, wait a minute. So you get to burn the house down and then say, well, it's up to you whether you want to be friends or not. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get what what Miranda's what she's doing. Like. Pull up, rip off the band-aid, bitch. Like, you're just dragging this on. It's just making this worse. Like, I just don't like, you can destroy the relationship, but you can't say, why don't we be cordial or civil or even friendly? Really? Like, that's the hard part for you? Okay, whatever. Mm. Um, Carrie then tells Miranda that Steve told her, and I think this was last season when they were painting that house with the homeless shelter or whatever the fuck that was. Right, the whole um, overall gate where the, we were talking right. about if overalls were okay, and then I ended up buying some because of it, and then I took them back because they looked like an, an idiot wearing them. Because most people do. Yes, that. Yeah, that was a hard <laughs> time for all of us. It was tough. Um, Carrie said Steve told her he'd never take his wedding ring off. I'll never take my wedding ring off, I'll Carrie. Never take my wedding ring off, Carrie. We're, we're friends to the end. We're married. I'll have to. Pride of my cold dead body. My cold dead hands. My corpse. Um, Carrie brings up Aiden, and and of course the girls start asking questions. And I is like, "Who's Aiden?" And we're like, "Girl, watch Sex in the City. Get the DVD bubble. Right, watch the show, bitch. <laughs> you didn't watch the show you're on. <laughs> right. I mean, hello. Um. And then we see Carrie drafting an email to Aiden. Well, wait, isn't this the scene that Charlotte mentions Trey? We yes. And we I was like, Trey, Trey, Trey. Of course. Like, I'm like, they've just erased my memory. And I had to, like, think who that was for a second. Kyle Mickey G. Oh, he's one of my favorite actors. He might be my favorite. I love him. So good. And this show, uh, I mean, and Sex and the City. He's ever done. And Twin Desperate Twin Housewives. Peaks, and Twin, Twin Peaks. Peaks. Yes. And Showgirls, the hot And he body. seems like the nicest person on earth. He has a wine um does a wine line called chased by bear what go online chased by bear i love that (laughs) yeah it's vegan wine and he is just so wonderful i love him now that's somebody i would love to not only have on the pod but i would i would think i would rather see him come back than aiden at this point oh for sure and by the way he gave charlotte that a whole apartment that multi-million dollar apartment that's where she and harry live with their children now she got that free and clear. So for sure, Harry needs to croak, and Trey needs to come back. I'm down for it. Season three. People, we know they listen, so... Clearly, Wilson Phillips, yeah, we know mm-hmm. you're listening. Uh, Seema and Carrie are browsing Hampton's homes online on Carrie's new computer when Seema sees the email draft to Aiden, and Carrie's like, oh my god, don't, first of all, who do you trust on your laptop? Me? Nobody. No, or it's like looking at your phone. Let me look at your phone and, uh, you know, oh, you have pictures? Let me see. No, bitch. I would sooner die. Yes. There's, Definitely control. Yeah. Um, Carrie's like, don't send that. So they ran out. So I guess it's kind of fun that we might see this play out this season. Carrie and Seaman, the Hamptons, boning guys. Because I love the Hamptons episodes of season five or six of uh, the Sex in the City. I thought those well, what- were good episodes. Is it weird that she was like, if this is still your email, well, whose else email would it be? And it's like to Aiden Shaw at (laughs) AOL.com. Right. I'm like, whose else would it be? You don't (laughs) give up an email address, can you? Maybe you can. And someone else can take it. I was like trying to process that. I don't get it. Yeah. Does she not know how the intranets and, and emails work? I'm like, I think, I don't know. I don't think I have access to my AOL emails anymore because that was just too long ago. But I think I have. What was after that hotmail? I think I still probably have access to that. But can someone take it? No, like, I don't think so. I'm like, I've just let us know <laughs> the comment. If I'm so, like, I'm never... very concerned. <laughs> yeah, I've never heard of that. Um, notify our lawyers. Shay Shay calls Carrie to try and cancel um, 
the widow con appearance because there's a, a bomb cyclone outside and uh curry's like no i can't do that we're going lily is going to blake's house to fuck and lose her virginity which makes us all uncomfortable equally equally and then lisa has to walk to her event at moma because her car service is canceled we're gonna get she to a wouldn't couple let herbert drop her off she wouldn't and um, we're going to get to a couple of these in a second. Lily calls Charlotte because Blake doesn't have any condoms. And Charlotte goes out in a CGI Game of Thrones blizzard green screen CGI moment to try With a and... lot of blush on. So she looks like she's cold <laughs> <laughs> to try like and blush and Miss Piggy out there walking in the snow. To try and track down some condoms. She's like, Carrie, do you have any condoms? And Carrie's like, why the fuck would I have a condom? <laughs> that conversation was so annoying. Carrie kept saying, so you think I have an STD situation? So you're calling me to get condoms for Lily. So you're saying that I, I'm like, oh my God, stop asking. Stop that. The was whole so thing annoying. was very awkward. It wasn't like. It looked like Game of Thrones, but Game of Crones. <laughs> Game of Crones, that's good. And Carrie was wearing, what was she wearing? There was like some Jacqueline Smith for Kmart bedding. She had like wrapped around her. I, it looked like the people at the office that you see that are cold and they like are wearing like a comforter instead of like putting a sweater yeah. on. <laughs> I have to say though, I kind of lived for it. But Love one that. thing I wasn't buying was Carrie going out with her hair so professionally done in the snow. Yeah, and a blizzard, yes. Right? As a fellow curly-haired person, you would never go out in the snow or rain with your hair like that. It would destroy it in a second. It yeah. just it just wouldn't happen. Um, but I did kind of like that big coat. It, but I was so distracted by the bad green screen or CGI that it was just very, it was very distracting. Yeah, the um, hair thing. I don't have curly hair, but the weather really affects my hair, too. Like, it... It here, um, I like do it up, walk out, and I know I'm going to walk outside and it's going to deflate. Smog. Yeah. <laughs> kind of weather will just ruin it. Absolutely. Relatable. So Carrie and Che arrive at WidowCon. Carrie finds out God. she's falling behind the author comedian Maddie Thomas. I love this actress um, who is absolutely killing, no pun intended, the audience with her comedy routine. Promote- Let me ask you, mm-hmm. how do you feel about joking about your dead loved ones like how do you feel like we will think anything's funny we could clearly we laugh at everything i mean i joan rivers talk about her all the time she's an idol of ours she joked about her husband committing suicide all the time yeah i feel like she had a heart behind it and had reasons that she did it and she told stories that were like moving at the same time funny this person up there joking about her dead husband and golden girls talks about their dead husbands all the time but how do you feel about things like watching somebody on stage other than say joan rivers joking about their dead love like would you get on stage and talk and joke about your dead grandparent or like how do you feel about that i for me i guess if you if you the person speaking is in an emotional place where they can handle it and as long as it helps them cope in some way which humor helps a lot of us cope with things sure, sure, then, sure. then i'm okay with it um it sounded like that woman's husband had been done for over like 20 years yeah so it was probably fine whereas carrie is still probably a little raw because big died like a year ago yeah i guess i don't know how i feel about it i had Somebody on Facebook once joked about their dog had just died and made jokes about it. And I totally (laughs) unfriended them. (laughs) I'm like, I just don't, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I I guess. I couldn't do it. I couldn't joke about my grandmother dying on, on stage. It's such a personal thing. It's it's hard to say if you're not in that position, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. (laughs) There are a couple of people I wish who had died. (laughs) <laughs> right, we joke about some dead some people that I don't like dying to. I either. pretend people have died and joke about it all the time. <laughs> right, it's in my fantasies. At night, I'm laying in bed, just imagining they're dead, and I'm in their will. Bob Eubank shows up. And... <laughs> so Car- <laughs> Carrie is like, oh my God, Rachel Dratch is making me follow behind this brilliant comedian author who oh, is wasn't. slaying the audience. And I'm, I'm about to do a reading from my depressing ass book that nobody wants to buy. Looking and she, sad, dressed sad, everything sad. 
Yeah. And she's like, Che, her hair has, like you said, deflated. And she's like, Che, please write me a joke. So Che comes up with like a subpar joke. And then Mad- Maddie Thomas, who's on the stage currently, delivers that joke because I guess it was the most obvious thing about the, the vibrators, the widow maker or whatever it was called. <laughs> yeah, we talk about the widow make the widow maker, right. When when Carrie shows up, there's the widow wand. The widow and wand. She- and Shay's standing there looking like Cousin Eddie from Christmas Vacation. And <laughs> there was, like, way more jokes about this. This would, I wanted more about this this widow wand. Is, is it real? Is it real? Is that what Seema was using? No. Well, it reminded me of the the uh, Grace and Frankie. They came up with a, a, a vibrator for elderly women that was arthritis friendly on Grace and Frankly. Frankie. What was it called? Did it have a funny name? Um, it was, like, the something vibe. Again, I'm sure a thousand people are going to comment with what the real name of it was. I'm sorry, I don't remember. The something vibe. It was it gra- on Grace and Frankie. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway. Uh, um, okay, so we see LTW is also being... There's a lot of women on the show that just happen to be honored at the same night. Right. <laughs> it's all <laughs> happening at the same time. Yeah, during, Everything. during the like, bomb cyclone. Yeah, the, the, bur- during the bomb, bomb cyclone. Yeah, that. So she's speaking at her event as well. Herbert shows up, which is really sweet to her surprise. See, he's wonderful. Leave him alone. And I can I love I actually love the scene where LTW is putting on her wig in the restroom and the other woman. Even though I thought the other woman was I fucking her a little too hard, I'm like, bitch, mind your business. I thought she was gonna be like, hey. Well, and then LTW puts on her wig and it's all messy, and then it cuts for like a second away and comes back, it's like flawless. I'm like, okay, well, clearly. She also, I think that. Lisa has great natural hair too. I'm like, even Agreed. though when it was peeking I, out under that cap, I was like, your natural hair looks pretty great too. <laughs> I love the wrap or whatever she was wearing with the white and black. Oh, yeah, I love it. She remember amazing. RuPaul wore that on one of the reunions <laughs> during the COVID season. Oh, is that where it came from? RuPaul threw it out. And then, yeah, and then sex, uh, just like that. Hey, Charlotte delivers the condom she finally found to Lily. Um, and they embrace. Thanks, mommy. Thanks, mom. I mean, now I won't get pregnant. I almost want her to, just despite Charlotte. Yeah, sort of. Condoms were cheap. Wherever you got them from, they broke. It, yeah, they froze. Now and... you're a grandmother. Oh, whatever. <laughs> next season, stay tuned. Yes. Carrie's reading from her book and making all the widows even more depressed. And then she goes backstage <laughs> where Maddie Thomas tells Carrie that she loved her book. So Carrie feels vindicated. Because she needed a good cry. I'm like, was it? did you cry because it was sad or because it was so bad? She's like, thank you for being such Were a... Were you bored to tears? <laughs> thank, you... <laughs> thank you for being so terrible because now I'm going to sell more books than you. Right. Thank you for boring me to tears. I took up a real <laughs> hobby and now I'm helping starving children. And now I'm slaying the widow. And then Carrie's like, it feels so good to make a difference. Anyway, go on. <laughs> Steve, oh, this is the best part of the episode. Steve comes home and finds Miranda folding laundry. Brady is working underage at Steve's bar, Scout. Now, a lot of people have been wondering, does Steve still own Scout, which he started during the original show? And mm. apparently he does, and his underage mm. child is working there. Um, that's makes, cool. sense, makes sense, makes sense, makes that's sense. That's cool. Miranda asks Steve how his apartment search is going, and this is where it all comes to fruition. He, Steve says, I'm not moving, Miranda. This is my fucking house. I built the cabinets. I put the floor in, and I'm not moving. And and then he's, he gives it to her so good. He says, I, oh, my God. You never wanted me. You never wanted Brady. And you never wanted to move to Brooklyn, bitch. Yeah, he really smacked down. I thought that was a great. That scene is one of the best scenes so far. So far. For sure. Yeah, it's it was very powerful. It uh, it made me emotional. And Steve, that actor is so good. And maybe you know, yeah. it's definitely missing that emotion. This whole show has this whole time. And I'm so glad that this scene happened. It was it was very emotional and made me kind of almost tear up too. Even yeah, I, I hate to admit it, but it was impactful, and that's a real word now. Impactful, yes, impactful. I'm all about that. Even if something sucks, if there's some impact. It makes me happy, and this was impactful. So Miranda okay. bursts into tears and grabs her coat to storm out because she's emotional. She can't handle how real Steve is finally being with her. And then here's what I don't like. Steve runs after her immediately. Yes, that was annoying. I agree. 
I totally agree. I couldn't believe that he did that. I'm like, let that bitch go. Like, let her go. Let that fucking bitch freeze in the snow in the bomb cyclone. Let her tits freeze and fall off. Yes. Let her turn into Jack Torrance from fucking The Shining and freeze out in the snow. But he didn't. He's chasing after her. And I liked, actually liked Miranda's response. Like, it was like kind of like visceral a little bit and kind of like, you know, catching breath. Like, that was a good response. Like, Cynthia Nixon, you know, I don't know how many episodes she's fucking directed. But she did this one. And she that scene, up until he was like really trying to stop her, was annoying. It was good. It was very good. I wanted this. I think he, I also think he should have let her go. And I think it should have continued to next week. We should have, it should have ended on this point for me, for Steve. For Miranda. sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I also think she looks really great in this episode. And whether or not that's because she directs it, <laughs> I don't know. Right. But I thought, she, I thought she looked as beautiful as she did in the, in the original show and the movies. I thought she looked great yeah. in those. You know, you're, that this show is missing some cliffhangers. Like, wouldn't it have been great if she ran out into the outside and just was, like, so upset she wasn't paying attention. She ran into the streets and she looked to the left and you see car headlights and you hear tires because it's snowing. You hear tires squealing and then it, like, cuts out the scene and we don't know if Miranda just got hit by a car or not. And then the next, the, the next episode, you see Miranda in the hospital on life support and Steve is there. Wouldn't this be great? Or, or somebody pushed her off the subway platform onto the tracks. Yeah, that has, that's just, happening a lot lately. I think like, that would have been fried on the tracks. Would you want her to fry on the tracks or get hit by the subway or both? Oh my god, I would love a little <laughs> bit of both if that's possible. A little, little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. <laughs> oh, we're going to hell. Um, so Steve and Miranda, they ended up staying the night together. I I just felt like they reconciled way too quickly for yeah. the amount of emotion that Steve presented. This was way too quick. But they end up spooning, and then Miranda finds a magnum, by the way, magnum condom wrapper. We all know what that Size means. extra large in black, like from the Golden Girls. Yeah. She in black. the ultra slim. In black. The <laughs> in black, right. Condoms, condoms, condoms. Did you just get out of prison? Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> and Miranda's like, oh my god. You've been here being the victim this whole time. And he's like, wait a minute, bitch. You're the, that's all on you. You this thought I was the victim. was infuriating. This made me so angry that she was reacting like this. Like he had sex with someone. So he moved on. Are you kidding me? Having sex with someone is not moving on. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You're are, right. What planet are you on, Cynthia Nixon, that you would even equate that suggest this that having sex with someone means someone has moved on just because that's how you what you think is moving on does not mean that for a man that may be totally different well women anybody like this is most cases having sex with someone after a breakup death you know the same death or not breakup i'm like what am i thinking here my everybody's dead to me in this um the the break it's it's not moving on having sex with someone Absolutely. It's finding comfort in some other way. You know, breakup sex doesn't mean you've moved on if you break up. That's what I was trying to say. She's just totally tone deaf, Cynthia Nixon. Tone deaf. So Miranda end up, ends up leaving Steve because now she's like, oh, I don't need to feel sorry for you. I'm going to go live my life. And she goes to Che's apartment. And then what happens? Ugh. Che, che was up taking with... dishes out of the dishwasher. I couldn't believe it. Oh, that's not the point of the scene. <laughs> but that is an important part of the scene. <laughs> <laughs> che has actually gotten off the couch, did put down the, the pirate place. booty, and is emptying the dishwasher. Wow, radical, groundbreaking, and so proud of her. So and proud. breaks up with Miranda. And this is exactly what we have wanted for mm, one and a half seasons now. Yeah, it was pretty boring breakup. I wanted, I wanted Miranda to like snap because she just had this scene with Steve. I wanted her to be like the other side this time and be the one freaking out and throwing things or something at Che because Che was such a total bitch to her this whole entire time and treated her badly and was emotionally cold to her and manipulative. I wanted Miranda to snap and be like strangling her or something. Me too. So what's going to happen now? Is Miranda going to try to get Steve back? Is Miranda going to be single and fabulous question mark that's a throwback is miranda gonna murder che in the night 
throw herself off Che's balcony of the apartment oh, they so can't afford. I hope she doesn't. You know what though? Her trajectory, trajectory, <laughs> off the off the balcony, uh, throughout <laughs> this this whole thing is just being more and more pathetic. So I guess it would make sense for her to like Madame Butterfly herself or something like you know kill herself, and and it would just make sense the way that her journey and personality has gone for her to be so weak and sad it's just i can't live without che and kills herself you know in desperate housewives kyle mclaughlin was listening to the madam butterfly album oh there it is <laughs> <laughs> um yeah absolutely and then at the end of the episode we see carrie says fuck it she's clearly drunk and sends, it sends that email to aiden as we and high as we've all done a million times Send that email drunk or that text, baby. Do it. And then the next day after you sober up, you look and you're like, oh, and shit. And you're fucking horrified. <laughs> what have I done? Yeah. So uh, next week, we're going to see Aiden. I'm just assuming I didn't watch the preview. No, I don't like it. I like to be surprised. But <clears throat> yeah, I guess we'll see him. I thought we were going to see him this time. I just I do too. But I guess not. I guess not. But that's it till next time. Yeah. We'll see what happens. This episode was emotional. Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. Triggering. And Wilson Phillips. Uh, Hold on for one more day. I hope you enjoyed the bomb cyclone. Yes. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Welcome back to the broadcast. Your favorite podcast. You ask for this shit if you're easily